Okay, everybody, so this is my spoiler review of the Yellow Jackets finale, written by showrunners Ashley Lyle and Bart Nickerson, and this is directed by Eduardo Sanchez. So like I did last week, I'm going to break down my review into two parts. We'll start with the present day storyline, and then we'll go to what's going on in the woods. Okay, so I love the present day starts with Misty here, and she's got this Caligula bag that says don't ruffle my feathers which was great and i think competing with the funny line of the book club line with jeff is has to be this line in the beginning here at misty where she's like oh no gloria and they're like yeah she had another stroke and she says she was so young and the nurse goes she was 89 that was amazing and the show does such a good job of just throwing in little humorous lines in a very dark show in itself and there's something obviously so enjoyable about misty in particular in christina ritchie's portrayal of her in present day and what you love about this character of misty is she is absolutely insane but she's still so damn likable and even when she's mentioning to nat in the car the terms of their deal and you actually realize what the deal is is that misty is agreeing to get rid of a dead body for nat just so she'll go to the reunion and i love that that goes on throughout this episode that misty while all the other three women are nervous about the reunion, have all these emotional feelings, Misty is just excited to be with her friends. She's talking about how she went out drinking at this reunion. They had fun and she's hung over. It really is a great written character. Now, before Misty and Nat arrive to Adam's where Shauna and Thaisa are with Adam's dead body, there is a very interesting shot where Shauna is looking down at the blood that is soaking through now, through the dead body of Adam. And they make a big point of that, of her looking at that. And it also, to me, connects to the moment in the woods this episode where Sean is just about to eat some of the bear blood. And one of the girls is like, you know, don't eat that. Like, you'll get sick. And as this episode goes on more and more, I'm just like, you know, Shauna to me is like, it's synergy for Showtime, basically, because she's like Dexter, you know. We get to see her even cut up a body this episode, and she doesn't get affected by it, you know. She has those kind of serial killer tendencies where she can easily kill animals and, again, this, like, craving for blood. So I, I think that's fascinating. Again, it could also allude to her eventually probably eating people. And again, just great humorous moments between these great actresses is when Sean is like, really, Nat? You know, your big plan is bringing Misty here? And she says this in front of Misty, you know, and Misty's like, how about how have you been? Hi, and... Thanks for helping us cover up a murder. I, I just thought that was so great. Okay, so a really important scene is with Shauna and Nat here. And Nat is still pushing at Shauna about, you know, like, hey, if he was a blackmailer, what's the deal? Like, who killed Travis, right? Did he at least know somebody? And it's interesting because we know Shauna is lying to Nat and Thais's face about who the actual blackmailer is. And that we know it's actually her husband, Jeff. But I do truly believe Shauna here when she's basically saying to Nat, you know, I don't believe there is a conspiracy here. And that Travis, yeah, just killed himself. And she's like, I know what it's like, the numbness, paranoia. Sometimes I look at the world and it's like all the light is gone out of it. Maybe Travis couldn't stand to live like that anymore. And maybe you need to start trying to forgive him. So Shauna's saying this, which she really, I believe, truly believes. But she also obviously wants Nat off her tail about the blackmailing. Kind of forget about it so it doesn't go back to Jeff. But... This sets up for the episode Natalie going to a really dark place. And actually, it's Shauna saying this stuff that's like, you know, putting Nat's hope for something's up here, you know, that Travis wouldn't do this if someone killed him down. And it's putting her in a bad place. And I thought that was really well written here. And I do think with a show I wasn't, I haven't been too crazy about the present day storyline. This episode, its strength was how good the present day story was here and how much hope it gives me for season two, which we'll get into. And I mean, I can't praise enough how much great humorous lines they had here with Misty, where she's like, I just had the craziest case of deja vu while she's cleaning up blood. Like, of course Misty would say that. So Misty's great plan here was actually to take the hands and the head of Adam and how to get rid of those. Like she said, the most important part to get rid of was throwing them in Gloria's casket and having them cremated. So that was set up really well. And there's a little thing they throw in here on second watch when I watch it that like Misty mentions really quickly to them that she's taken all of Adam's journals and stuff and his books. So she's definitely going to rummage through all that. And that's going to be interesting. That's definitely going to be a plot line for season two. Again, what I'm talking about where they're really setting up the present day to be much better for next season. Now there's a really strong little mini montage here between the three leading ladies here with Thaisa, Shauna, and Nat and... We see Shauna's crying in the shower, right? And this is almost in a way subconsciously 
getting us ready for Shauna by the end of this episode, their big moment with Jackie. It's also showing us, I think, the first two times we've seen Shauna even cry in this show. And it's in the present day and in the past. So I thought it was really smart they saved that for the finale and had them both appear in both stages. And I also like how it was cutting between Thaisa coming home, also crying, but to an empty house that she's losing her family here. And Nat, like I said prior, is already clearly in a dark headspace. But I like this in particular so much with Shauna because I'm someone, like I said in my previous reviews, that I am not a fan of the character of Shauna. I am Team Jackie all the way. But this episode was the first one that made me like Shauna more because I saw more humanity in her. And everything we've seen about her, some of the crazy stuff she does, at the end of the day, you see how much she does actually feel guilt about what happened to Jackie and how much she loves Jackie and back at her from Jackie. So what makes shows and TVs great I've said this in other reviews, I'm going to say it again, it's great relationships. And the core of season one is the relationship between Shauna and Jackie. And I like that in the finale, they gave it a nice little bow as a payoff. That that was going to be the focus here. We were going to get it resolved and see how that ended, how it's going to affect Shauna going forward. And I think they did a really good job of doing that. Now, when our three ladies show up to the reunion, I love that Misty's already there and then she just jumps into their like big moment where they're all walking in together looking cool. And it's always great to have offspring playing. Uh, that gives you a point up just on that alone. And again, like you see how they're all so on edge and this is a very emotional thing for them to even be there, but Misty's just excited to take pictures. Now, one of my favorite moments in the episode, and this is obviously how great of an actress Juliette Lewis is, is when there's this haunting, sad score under her when she's looking at the display, like, trophy case of the soccer team of the Yellow Jackets and looking at a picture of Travis just with the acting on her face, seeing where she's at. And it's really sad. And it's sad because we'll even see her make a toast a couple minutes later about her close friends. And I do believe here this is where she's thinking, like, tonight's the night, like, that she's going to kill herself. Now, we also see which we learned last episode that Randy Walsh is the only other person besides Jeff and Shauna that knows Jeff is the blackmailer. But Randy Walsh realizes right away that Shauna knows by her body language. And then she just basically threatens him and is like, I will gut you like a pig if you talk. And Shauna means this. Like, that's what's awesome about this show is they've written a character that, yeah, like when those kind of lines you've seen in shows before come out, they don't actually mean exactly literally what they're saying, but Shauna does. And what it makes me think is that Randy is someone who clearly will slip up. He is a goofball. And I think if he does, I don't think he'll ruin it for Shauna. I think he's just going to be killed by Shauna for sure. And again, I just love little lines. They always contribute in the show that serves the character and learning more about the character or just fits with the character. There's no waste to it. And that's even just Thaisa here. Just a nice little reminder to the audience when she's sitting at the table. is like, if one more person tells me I'm in their thoughts and prayers, like upset about it. Because again, remember, Thaisa throughout this whole story is never been the believer she's not the one into the supernatural and even in present day she's still not someone who just believes in it now the Thaisa that is having her episodes that's a whole different story I'm talking about the Thaisa that's consciously aware of what she's doing now Allie she's the class chair and she was a member of the Yellow Jackets that wasn't actually on the flight with but was supposed to be now I don't trust her at all I think we're purposely not to trust her she is annoying purposefully and also, you have to look at the framing here. Maybe I'm looking too much into this, but where it says on the presentation behind her, 1996, she is covering that six with her body. It is perfectly lined up with the upside down sixes next to her. It made me think of 666, that it's giving you a sign this woman is literally like the devil. Because also, just from seeing her for a few moments, she is clearly like envious she wasn't on the flight in a way, in a sick way, that she wants some of that glory that they have. And it even shows like, how just like, this is her thing, this slideshow, like the way she presents it with the Enya. And it leads to this extremely awkward Jeff and Shauna having to dance in front of a picture of Jackie. But I love they blended this and cut it through with the past time with Shauna and Jackie's big moment and showing Shauna's guilt there. But we'll get to that. So let's go to the next morning. And you see Misty, like I was saying before, she's like excited about how the night went. She's telling Jessica like, yeah, we had shots, hanging out with old friends, you know, I'm a little hungover. And of course, she has a Caligula mug. And what I love about this mug, it's not just a bird mug, it's a custom Caligula mug she had made with the picture of her actual bird. I thought that was great. You know, let's get that Yellow Jackets merchandise made for us in the real world. It's already on 
Urban Outfitters some of the stuff that's been selling out quick, but don't buy from them. They're the devil. They Their prices are ridiculously overpriced. So let's wait till like Hot Topic makes it. And I love the line, Jessica calling it the Caligula Inn. But you knew the second Misty handed Jessica those cigarettes that they were poison. That's her M.O., Misty. But what's so fascinating about it, and I'm talking about again how it's setting up season two for the present storyline to be really good, is that there's all these inner secrets between the main characters here. And that we know that Jessica was hired by Thaisa to see if anyone was going to speak. And for Misty to now poison her, and I assume she might be dead, but she might actually still be alive. That's going to be interesting when Thaisa finds out that, you know, Jessica was poisoned at least. So how Misty knows that and Shauna's hiding the Black Matter thing. So we got a lot of things people aren't telling each other. So Thaisa is actually convinced she's not going to win. She's preparing a concession speech while she's on the phone with Simone. And, but what's interesting, Simone mentioned Sammy's on a play date with a kid named Elvis. I feel like that's something that's going to make Reddit go crazy. Like, why, who is this Elvis? You know, why is he named Elvis? But again, it's just showing you this sad state Thais is in before she gets a big win here, which we'll get to. So, like I was saying last episode, Jeff and Sean, it looks like now they're going to be closer there than ever. And it definitely happens here when they're sitting on the couch watching TV. And Sean is like, I think we should get a cat. And Jeff's like, well, I hope this cat behaves itself or I'll end up in the chili pot. I mean, how much of a psycho is Jeff that he's kind of like just cool that he didn't end up in the woods starving? And we know he read the journal, so I guess Jeff and Sean are really our perfect match. And then again, this could be something you're looking way too into it, but it could also mean something else too where Sean is now thinking about getting a cat after Misty just helped them. So maybe Misty is growing on her because Misty is the cat lady. And maybe by Jeff saying... I hope this cat behaves itself or will end up in the chili pot could also mean that, you know, if Misty does cross Shauna at any point that Shauna will actually be Misty's end. And Callie is just like, what the hell is going on? Because she knows a lot of the dirty laundry between the two of them and now she sees them really close. And what I love is that Callie sees on TV that Adam is missing. So Callie and Simone here, what they do so good about their characters is now they have learned information that is huge and it makes them like Randy Walsh, variables for what can go on between these adults in the current timeline. And it's going to be interesting how Shauna handles Callie in general. Uh, that intrigues me a lot. And back to Simone, right? One of my favorite moments of this episode was her in the basement finding Thaisa's, like, feeding dungeon here. And at the same time, they're cutting between Thaisa winning the elections, surprisingly, and becoming the senator, Thaisa Turner. And we see the dog that she ate, which a lot of people predicted, which was crazy, and the Sammy doll there, and the symbol. And like I'm saying, all this stuff is just fascinating stuff that Simone found this out, setting up really great seeds for season two. And I was so scared because before we go into the past, we know Jackie dies, right? But because this Jackie tragedy is like, happening cutting between when nat's about to shoot herself i'm like oh my god are we gonna lose nat in current day too i was like can't lose juliet lewis now we need her and it was such a good trick because it sounded like the gun went off but it was actually just a knock at the door but it's a group of people who kidnap her with the symbol on their necklace and there you go the phone starts ringing when they take her it's too late and it was Susie, nat's former sponsor who looked into the bank account and there's your big reveal that Lottie Matthews is the one who definitely killed Travis and was the one taking the money out of the bank account. So she lives Lottie. She is not pick girl. And is this going to be the casting of the century or what? I mean, any working actress right now is probably calling their agent, seeing if they can get, get an audition at least to play adult Lottie. And I'd love to hear you guys down below who you think should be adult Lottie. And Susie too. She says she thinks someone's following her, so I'm sure... Susie knows this information. She's going to be killed probably episode one next season. And it's a great cut to Lottie, this reveal in the snow in the past. But we'll get to that because now we'll shift over to the whole past storyline from the top. So in the past, right, they're waking up from this crazy night and moment they had on these shrooms. And there's so much to be said about the visual shot here of Shauna picking up the knife. And when she's looking at it, confused in the foreground, in the background, you have Lottie behind her almost smirking with Mari a little further back. And what this really tells me too is it really serves a lot of that theory I really like going on on Reddit that, yes, it's pretty much confirmed at this point, especially with this episode that Lottie is the Antler Queen. But that there could be a passing of that to a second Antler Queen and that it's Shauna and that they've given so many visual clues to Shauna being the Antler Queen and that that shot visually to me could be that influence Lottie has over Shauna. Now we see that Nat is in the woods and finds Travis to make sure he's okay. And he's looking for Javi. And it's interesting because 
it would have changed everything if Travis and Nat were with the main camp and it would have changed what happened with Jackie. They would have been on Jackie's side, even though, yes, Nat would still be obviously kind of pissed at Jackie. But at that moment, the more important thing is Travis and what happened to Travis. And it was smart by the writers to have to kind of get where they needed to be, but it was justified that Nat would do that first. Because in my head, I'm still kind of thinking like, where we left off the last episode, it's kind of weird that, you know, Nat didn't directly stay there and confront Lottie. That, to me, feels a little bit like a cheat, for sure. So it, it's not all a perfect transition, but for where we start in this episode, that part makes sense. And also, Misty here is reading this black book with, like, the picture of a deer head on it. So I wonder what that book is. It was probably in this somewhat cursed cabin here. And I wonder what she's learning in there, Misty. And we see Jackie comes out fighting with the girls, and then everyone realizes Misty drugged them. But what comes in is this bear. It's also interesting, too, is that when the bear comes out, and then Lottie's the one who takes the knife to go kill it, this bear kind of bows down to Lottie, which, to me, really serves the supernatural, like that, yeah, there is something supernatural happening for sure, because maybe this bear is sensing that, that there's something in the air there. But what I do love about this show is, again, you can't just fully say it's definitely supernatural. Because, again, you could still justify so much of it by Lottie having visions, not taking her meds, them being starving, whatever they're eating, etc., etc. So I like the show kind of toys with you like that. And even that visions that people are seeing could just be dreams. And this is what I'm talking about. What's crazy about this character of Misty is that when she's going to try to help cook with the bear, Ma Mari's like, no, we're not trusting you with food. And then she says, F off to Misty. I don't know about you guys, I felt bad for Misty here, and it's weird that I feel bad for her, but I, again, she's just so damn likable. You you like Misty, she's like the complete opposite of Lottie, because they both will pretty much do anything, like, they do awful things, but Misty, her intentions are that she just wants to be liked, you know, she wants to be friends with everybody, where Lottie's just completely, like, possessed, you know, and just not really a good bone in her so far. So what's important is Van... I love the scene where she's talking to Thaisa about the incident that happened with her and the wolf. And she's like, before she thought she was going to die, she saw something. I don't think I was dead, but I don't think I was alive either. It's like this in-between, she says. And to me, this could be, which we're going to get to, because there's, there's a lot going on in the scene with Shauna and Jackie when Jackie dies. But I feel like Jackie was having this experience that Van had before she froze to death in that montage seeing the man in the cabin and then it wasn't shauna dreaming or maybe there's still a connection there but we'll get into that but see ty who's always going to be the doubter here's like you were in shock and the way ty reacts is you're just like there's no way it's going to work for these two now they're complete opposites on this stuff and they're hardcore opposites like van is really in now almost as much as lottie and ty is not and they give Ty, just I'm talking about these quick, great, humorous lines. Van, you believe that Sporty Spice is the most underrated Spice Girl. And you know what? Van's right there. I'll give her that. And visually, too, with Van, the way they've done the makeup with her and the scar she has, it reminds me of the Chucky doll. I don't know about anyone else, because she also has got the red hair going. So it makes me think clearly that she is going to be a monster at the end of this, and that she is in this clearly in the Lottie crew, and I think confirmed in this episode for sure that Lottie, Van, and Mari are in this crew of Lottie and this believing in this entity while Misty, in the beginning at least, is with them. But I, again, what's so cool and interesting about this character Misty is she, you know, just goes to the flow. She doesn't really, I don't think, believe in this stuff. She goes with whatever again where she fits in and is liked. So Misty, someone again who's going to, I think, throughout this story, flip and flop and go to different sides. And clearly because Misty, we know, yeah, at the end of the episode, she's bowing behind Lottie, but Misty's still, even to be in the presence of Natalie, Thaisa, and Shauna, you know, I don't think she stayed there. I think she eventually is with them, or they wouldn't be near her. So we see at their bear feast here that, you see, Van is like, Lottie, you said we would have food now. We do, basically. And Jackie's like, come on, that's just luck. And Van's the one even suggesting a grace here. So this is like a first taste of these rituals that are clearly going to start happening. And I love when they're joining hands and reaching out. Misty goes to reach out for Jackie. That was great. And quick plug, I just interviewed the actress of young Misty and Samantha Hanratty. It was a blast. Talked to her this week. So please check out the interview. It's linked below. And you see they're giving thanks now to the spirit of the bear. And Jackie's just like, what the hell is going on? This is what I'm talking about where you wish 
you know, maybe a Nat or Travis was here to kind of speak some sense into these people, right? And Thais is muted right now because she's just playing with it to look, you know, safe face in front of Anne and, you know, she can't just speak up at this moment. But you see now Jackie leans into the elephant in the room about what exactly happened with Travis. And this leads to the much awaited showdown between Shauna and Jackie. And they're airing it all out. And again, there's great lines here between the two of them. Amazing performances by them. And you know what? Like, you, you, whatever side you're on, Sean and Jackie are, are neither. Like, they're both saying truth here. They're both a little wrong and a little right. And I think that's why it's such a good relationship and so realistic. And that at the end of the day, they love each other, you know, and it makes it so tragic, the ending of it. And you wish you didn't get to that level of fighting. And I think it goes to that crossed moment when Shauna says that you peaked in high school line. Like, that's where it like went past them just saying kind of truthful things they had to get out and went to like just seriously being mean by Shauna. I still hate Shauna. And I'm going to miss Ella Purnell like crazy. Like, I, you know, I'm sure they're going to have her in flashbacks, maybe even time before they got to the woods. So it is just the unfortunate thing when you have a death like this that you lose a great actress in the show as a regular. And when I'm talking about setting up this group that's more evil, you know, the coach even steps in here when he's like, we can't just have Jackie go outside, but you see Lottie and Mari are really like, no, it's fine. You know, so like, again, those three and Van, it's just, they're scaring me right now. And what really is going to drive Shauna's guilt we see here too is that Thais even said to Shauna when Jackie was out there and she got this like baby fire going, like, just go talk to her. And Shauna didn't. And they make you think she did, which was brilliant. By her going out there and it really is what they make you think is a Shauna dream sequence that she feels like, you know, she woke up and envisioned everything that just happened with Jackie and seeing Laura Lee and the mystery guy in the cabin. But I, again, my theory is that it was Jackie's moments before death in her head and she was experienced with Van did, but the difference between her and Van is Van lived and Jackie died. And that this does have to do with some kind of supernatural thing kind of getting in her head during this. And I'm going to say it has to be addressed, you know, maybe you can excuse it with being completely starving or this supernatural thing possessing Jackie, but, you know, she's freezing to death. It's extremely rare in real life to sleep through freezing to death that you would just wake up at some point freezing cold and she's right next to the cabin, you know? So you're kind of like, all right, I'll suspend my disbelief a bit, but it is a little silly because it's so rare. But let me just say, when Shauna runs out there and sees Jackie is frozen to death, my God, the acting of young Shauna should be applauded. That was incredible incredible and i really think the actress of young shauna should be nominated for an emmy i think we've all been talking about the adult actors here but i think there's so many you can give it to samantha hanrad you can give it to ella Purnell. you can give it to the actress of shauna you can give it to taisa like all of them i could see the case it's such a strong cast but really here i think even who stole the show of the finale was young shauna and now we see lottie has the bear heart and she's like, now nah, let the darkness set us free. And winter is here. It's going to be so fascinating what happens with season two here. And who's in what group. What's going to happen with all these people knowing secrets in season two in present day. And what's going to happen with Shauna in the woods. Because this is clearly a huge traumatic moment losing Jackie because of the love they had for each other. So, And the guilt she's felt through it. So that she is human, you know. And I really like that. So for me, especially on rewatch, it's the best episode of the season for sure. I'm giving this one a 9.5. I'm really satisfied about this finale. Now, you might have people who wanted more jaw-dropping moments here they're waiting for, but here's the thing, is that you have to be careful in a show like this, especially in mystery box shows, because if you give too much of those moments you're kind of teasing and, you know, waiting for, it's that cat string theory with, like, cats, right, where you dangle a toy in front of them, and then they always want to keep going for it. That's us right now, but then the second you give it to them, they're bored by it, so it's like, they almost have to wait to have us watching them eat people and confirm it because then what? You know, then we see it and then it's like, okay, we're just going to watch people eat people. Like, they have to save stuff and keep you hooked in that mystery going. And I think that's why it was so smart that they gave us enough answers here to make it satisfied, produced new questions, but made the most important thing relationships and characters. And that we're going to get to that stuff we want, right? But you have to hold on to it. You got to make us wanting to return. It's part of the game here, you know. This is classic thing with Twin Peaks where it ruined the show when they revealed, you know, who did the murder early on. And that goes to even with things people wait for in shows that maybe not even murder mysteries, but, you know, you wanted Jim and Pam to get together and then they get together and then, okay, cool, now they're together. It's just not the same. You miss that 
chase they had. So it's, I think it's the same thing. I don't know. That's me though. But I thought it was great. And let me know though what you guys thought of it. And I think too, I'm going to give my season score adding this in. You know, I think this show deserves, again, I would say an 8.8. .8. I think that's fair. I think the second half's way better. I think still that they put way too much padding in the first couple episodes. And I really am standing out to, again, I can't get over how bad episode four is to me. This is my one gripe. It's not all amazing, you know, that, I mean, Jesus, like, we just watched a whole episode of Shauna and Adam on a date, so I want, I don't feel like still that was justified at all, but anyway, even if they go back to that, again, you want more satisfaction in a one season than waiting, so that's some of my qualms, but overall, the score is incredible, the acting all around, I'm excited, it's made such an exciting community, and everyone having their theories, so I'm so happy where this is going and excited for what's to come. Let me know again your theories, who you think should play adult Lottie, how you're feeling about the Jackie death, are you upset, Are you? does it make sense to you, and please check out my interview with Samantha Hanratty, who plays Misty Quigley. I think you're going to enjoy it. It was so much fun. She is awesome. And please follow me at Steve Varley Show on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for more of me. And please subscribe, because I'll be doing reviews of Euphoria next, and other shows as well. And I appreciate any subscriber who helps me in so many ways, and if you love what I do here, Become a member today will help me in so many ways as well. And I'll see you next time.